Don in London, hello, good morning. It's August 20th, 2009, nine o'clock in the morning, and uh, my video is all about recovery from addiction to substance or behavior. And my addictive substance, alcohol, if it wasn't alcohol, it was working like a workaholic, a uh, relationshipaholic, trying to find the best in everything, including me. And get, I guess trying to be perfect, and never so. So why? Why on earth? How, does, how, do, how do we become addicted and dependent on something which is a substance or behaviour? And I guess if we keep on doing the same old thing over and over again, uh, hoping for that absolute wonderful result of a, a feeling of euphoria and never quite getting it back, we keep on going and going and going. And self-will says somehow, somewhere, we'll feel as good as we ever did used, utilising that substance or behaviour. So addiction is, um, well, everybody has the capacity to become addicted to something. And my alcohol addiction really took a hold of me. I don't know when dependency became addiction, or does it matter? Does it matter where, where I, and where I came from in all of this? I don't know that it does today, but I, I know what helps me keep well. And it's a one day program, uh, which doesn't require coping strategies as such. It's a one day program utilizing 12 steps of action to change my attitude and behavior and these 12 steps of action are part of a fellowship program and uh, that fellowship is Alcoholics Anonymous and what I've found is if people don't have a malady or an addiction these videos are probably ignored or best ignored because it just doesn't apply but if you have somebody in the family who you wish to help and support I guess the best way to do that is not to challenge them directly on their behaviour, but to ask them what is going on for them, and then see what, what answers you get, and often it's denial of any problem whatsoever. And this denial is about shame and guilt in the main, that we can't stop doing something which is really harming us. So denial comes with addiction, and even normal people, so called, uh, if there is such a thing as normal people, normal people with uh, an understanding of their emotions, spiritual status and physical well-being, have problems with grief and denial comes when we lose somebody or something which is of great value to us and we cherish it. So denial is a coping strategy and it, it keeps and serves as well with the normal ups and downs of everyday life. However, Taken to the nth degree in an addict, denial is probably the worst condition we can possibly imagine because it keeps us out there doing what is hurting us and there is nothing worse than self-harm with no end in sight and that's why so many people just don't make it. So my fellowship, I call it my fellowship, I'm just a part of it, is unique, it's full of unique and authentic people and I don't speak for them. And I don't speak for AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, I speak about my recovery and how it's working. And the gift for me in all of this is to live one day at a time without a drink inside me so I can understand what's happening to me emotionally and who I am today. And the spiritual context is always for me reality and reality of the moment. If we live in the moment of now and can see the truth, that's my spiritual connection. And nothing is nothing is excluded from spiritual because spiritual is about the truth of now and the truth of ourselves so we can reflect and meditate for decades at the same time if we don't see the truth of now then there's no point so it's to relish what is going on good or bad and to I don't know what to experience life spiritual is an experience the spiritual experience so all of this stuff is really about how to keep well, find our path, find who we are, and not have to keep on going back to that old addictive behavior. So Fellowship helps me, Alcoholics Anonymous, and I go to meetings as regularly as I can. Uh, the amount of time I spent in meetings is nowhere near the amount of time I spend drinking. So the payoff is great because I get to live life as it is, seeing the truth of now. So when I, whenever I go to Fellowship meetings, I hear this preamble or statement said at the beginning, so I'll share it here, and I will share it here, because it slows me down into the moment. 
Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and to help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. What a, what a statement. So AA is there for one reason, a primary purpose to help people stop drinking on a daily basis. A life plan, one day long, 24 hours, and hopefully, if you're unlike me, you probably get about 8 hours sleep, but I don't work on that. I seem to get less, but that's okay. <clears throat> so AA helps me, and when I can't get to meetings, I utilize the literature which is available, this daily reflection book particularly, here on YouTube because it covers each step each month. Twelve steps of action, twelve, twelve months. Uh, the eighth step is make, about making a list of people we have harmed and being willing to make amends. And it's about the willingness. So for August 20th in this one, Daily Reflections, it says, Toward emotional freedom. Since defective relations with other human beings have nearly always been the immediate cause of our woes, including our alcoholism, no field of investigation could yield more satisfying and valuable rewards than this one, which is to sort out and identify where we've done harm and be willing to make those amends. So willingness is a pe pe peculiar thing for me in that over a period of time it seems to come first with awareness but then with a feeling of discomfort making me want to take some action and it's all about action it's about living and experiencing as I reflected on taking the eighth step my willingness to make amends to others came, in, came as a desire for forgiveness of others and myself and it has to be for ourselves as well we have to know what our part was in whatever happened I felt forgiveness towards others and after I became aware of my part in the difficulties of relationships I wanted to feel the peace and serenity described in the promises. From working the first seven steps, I became aware of whom I had harmed and that I had been my own worst enemy. In order to restore my relationships with my fellow human beings, I knew I would have to change. I wanted to learn to live in harmony with myself and others so that I could live, also live in emotional freedom, the beginning of the end of my isolation from my fellows and from God. Yes, and that then came the eighth step list, and the, the gift in there, uh, just so you know, I can be an agnostic, an atheist, or a God believer on any particular day, depending on my life experience, but you know, if, if we are saying that God is truth, God works through people, and I'm able to see the truth of now, and hear the wisdom from other people, then I'm pretty much on track, so the, the concept of God is really what you believe, and not what I believe and trust in it, trust in faith and courage and confidence and then we start to make some progress rather than being full of fear, putting on a brave face and utilising our ego to get over things or cope and in, as Bill sees it, this one, very pertinent because <laughs> it talks about the reality of the spiritual experiences perhaps the you raise the question of hallucination versus the divine imagery of a genuine spiritual experience. I doubt if anyone has authoritatively defined what an, a hallucination really is. However, it is certain that all, all recipients of spiritual experiences declare for their reality, the truth of now, reality. The best evidence of that reality is in the subsequent fruits. Those who receive these gifts of grace are very much changed people almost invariably for the better. This can scarcely be said of those of who, who hallucinate. Yeah, so it's about reality. So, you know, in all of that, and as Henry James, was it? No, Herbert Spencer said, content prior to investigation. The whole program is simply about finding the truth of now and how to live soberly. And what helps me when I start the morning off, I say a little meditation to myself or to God and good conscience. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference is simply in my life plan just for today.